revenue is just price times quantity and revenue will become a function of price if we do Q as a function of P and multiply that by P. Let's see what we can say about the derivative R prime P. We think of this derivative as the increase in revenue when price increases by one unit. To find this derivative, we need to differentiate this product. To do that, we use the product rule for derivatives. We have two terms. This is my first term and this is my second. So we do the derivative of the first term, that's Q prime P, multiplied by the second term unchanged, then plus. We do the first term unchanged and then we multiply by the derivative of the second term. The derivative of P with respect to P, well, that's just one. Remember that epsilon, the price elasticity of demand, was Q prime P times P over Q of P. This is almost what we have here in my first term. So what I can do is I can write this as Q prime P times P over Q of P multiplied by Q of P. These two terms, Q of P, will cancel. And you can see that this expression here is exactly the same as this expression here. So let's remove these. And then we have a Q of P, this term here. I have a Q of P here, I have a Q of P here. So I can factor this out. I get Q of P, parenthesis. When I factor this out, I'm left with only this part here, which is the price elasticity of demand. I factored this term out, so I'm just left with a one here. Now, epsilon is, well, pretty much always negative. We may even say always negative. It would only be positive for a given good, which if they exist are extremely rare. Let's have a look at the absolute value of epsilon. So if epsilon is minus one, this is one. If I put a minus sign in front of that, this is indeed equal to epsilon. We've just separated the minus sign and the actual number. Say that this is minus 0.7, then this absolute value is 0.7, and then we have this minus sign in front. So these two are indeed equal, at least if epsilon is negative. Using this formula for epsilon, I can write my derivative of R as Q of P. Let's reverse the position of these two. Then I get one and epsilon is minus the absolute value of epsilon. This will turn out to be a very important formula in microeconomics. We can also look at the revenue as a function of Q, R of Q, and this would be P of Q times Q where P of Q is the inverse demand function. In this case, R prime Q is the derivative of this P prime Q times this unaltered plus P of Q and the derivative of Q with respect to Q is one. Epsilon is the Q dP times P over Q. If I do the inverse of both sides, I get one over epsilon equal to one over dq dp or one over the derivative of the demand function is the same as dp dq the derivative of the inverse demand function the inverse of p over q becomes q over p so returning to this expression i can do r prime q equal to p prime q times q over p of q times p of q I've just multiplied by P of Q and divided by P of Q. So that will make no changes to this expression. And then I have P of Q. And again, I can factor out P of Q. I'm then left with this expression here. P prime Q is the same thing as DP DQ. And then we have Q over P. So this is precisely one over epsilon and then plus one. Again, let's replace epsilon with minus the absolute value of epsilon. It just makes it easier to remember that this is indeed a negative number. And then we have P of Q multiplied by one minus one of the absolute value of epsilon. 